Welcome to tutorial 7 where we're going to be looking at the 555 IC buffer. I'll get on to that more specifically in tutorial 2 but first of all let's have a little look at the previous circuit that we've seen which is a series circuit with a 10k resistor and an LDR. The LDR in this case is the pull down resistor. We know that as we increase light its resistance drops Therefore, as it gets darker, its resistance increases. So in this case, in this circuit, as we increase the darkness, the voltage at Q should get bigger because the resistance across here increases and therefore the voltage drop across it increases. OK, let's have a little look at that working. So looking at the circuit at the moment, we can see that the voltage in the light is 0.63 of a volt. So I'm now going to cover up the LDR and we can see that the voltage there has increased to about 3.3 volts. Depending on how we put the paper, There we go. So I'm folding it over and now we've got to well over 4 volts. So there should be more than enough voltage there to turn on the bulb. So I've entered those results into my sheet and we can see here that in the light it was 0.6 volts, in the dark it was about 4 volts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bulb into the circuit. The output voltage Q should provide the voltage for this bulb. The bulb I'm going to be using is a 3.5 volt bulb that draws 250 milliamps when it's on. To make things easier it should be the red dot uh, bulb that I provide for the pupils. Okay let's put this into the circuit. So there's no polarity on a bulb, but I do wire them red and black. So that goes to Q and the black goes down to zero volts. Now, our voltage on our meter is showing 0.01 and the bulb hasn't come on. But of course, it's only not should have been 0.6. I'm going to remove the bulb. Watch what happens. It goes back up to 0.6. And when I put the bulb back in the circuit, it drops to 0.01, in other words, zero. So let's increase the voltage by placing the paper over the top. Now we can see that the voltage has not increased. I'm going to remove the bulb. And the voltage goes back up to 4.2 volts. I'm going to put the bulb back in the circuit. And the voltage immediately drops back down to zero. Should we just check that the bulb is working just to confirm that and we can see the bulb coming on. So I'm going to put the bulb back in, increase it and the voltage remains at zero. So in the light the voltage at Q with the bulb is zero volts. In the dark the voltage at Q with the bulb is zero volts and the bulb on both occasions is off. Why does the bulb not come on when it should? Well the problem in this circuit is not the voltage. The voltage was getting high enough to turn the bulb on. The problem here is the current. The bulb requires 250 milliamps to turn it on. I, it will draw that much from a circuit. But if our circuit is not supplying enough current the bulb cannot turn on and because there is a huge current draw by the bulb on the circuit, the voltage drops from 4 volts down to zero. Because when you try to draw too much current in a circuit, the voltage will drop. Now, what can we do about that? We're going to be using a 555 IC integrated circuit buffer to do that. So let's move on to activity two.
Okay, welcome to activity two, where we're going to look at the properties of a 555 IC buffer. IC standing for integrated circuit. The 555 is possibly the most widely used home electronics integrated circuit in the world. Maybe possibly with another one called the 741, but it's pretty close. Generally, it's used as a timer for timing purposes, timing circuits. But we're going to be using it just as a current amplifier. In other words, it's going to provide enough current to drive our bulb. In activity one, you found that when you connected the bulb to the circuit with the LDR and the resistor, as in here, the bulb wasn't able to turn on because there wasn't enough current being supplied. So we're going to be using the 555 now to supply enough current to turn it on. So I've wired up my circuit. So the first thing to do is to check that the circuit works. So I'm going to cover up the LDR and once again what we're looking to happen here is that in the light its resistance was low so the bulb was off. When we cover up the LDR, the bulb comes on. Light off, dark on. So, if we look at that, in the light, the bulb is off, and in the dark, the bulb is on. Now that didn't happen in activity one because there wasn't enough current. So let's have a look and see what the 555 does that allows that now to happen. So we're going to measure the voltage at point A. Notice that, that is point A now, not Q. Q is always an output. You'll find that when we move on to logic, Q is the output. So we've got an input here, A, because this is now the input to the 555. And the output of the 555 is Q. This might be quite a good time just to have a quick look at the 555 itself so that we know how to connect it into the circuit. So the 555 is an 8 pin IC. It is a DIL which stands for dual inline IC which means it has dual two lots of legs in line with one another. There's a little notch out of one side of it or a little sometimes a little round bit next to pin one. Two, three, four, opposite four is five, six, seven and eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, opposite 4 is 5, 6, 7 and 8. In this case, they all add up to opposite pins 9. Whenever we use an IC, it is an active device, so therefore we need to connect it to power. In this case, and it's always worth referencing data sheets, in this case, pin 1 goes down to 0 volts, and pin 8 goes to the plus volts. This IC works off anywhere between 4.5 volts to 15 volts. We're going to be using a 5 volt power supply as usual, so therefore it falls within that range. You need to know all of the pins of a 555 for your electronics GCSE, and you will need to know how to draw the circuit diagrams associated with, associated with it later on. So, pin 2 is our trigger pin, pin 3 very important is our output. Pin 4 is our reset pin. Pin 5 is the control pin. 6 is the threshold and 7 is the discharge. You'll need to know these names and the pin numbers later on. For this practical we're using pin 1 and pin 8 as our power pins as always. Pin 2 is connected to pin 6 so we're connecting the trigger to the threshold and pin 3 is our output pin that is going to go to the bulb. As a by the way, should you need to use two 555s, you can either use two 555s 
or you can use what's called a dual timer which has two 555s inside it and the number of that is a 556. The benefit of using just the 556 over two 555s is that the power supply is only required once. Okay, moving on to the practical. So we are going to connect two voltmeters in this circuit, one of them to point A and one of them to point Q. So the voltmeter on the left is going to be at point A and the voltmeter on the right is going to be at point Q. And we're going to look at the voltages and we're going to connect them up. Now we're going to do that without the bulb first of all. So I'm removing the bulb from the circuit. I'm going to connect up my voltmeters. So the one on the right is going to go to the output Q and the one on the left is going to go to the input A. And I've connected all the earths and I've linked them all to the power supply. It's much better that way to keep them out of the way and therefore not too many leads going to the circuit. So now of course because we've disconnected the bulb we don't see anything happening apart from when we connect our meters up. So we know that at the moment there is light falling on the circuit and the bulb would have been off but it's not connected. So the voltage at point A, and even my hand moving over that there has changed the voltage. I'm just going to change the range. So in the light, the voltage at A, the input is 0.6, and the voltage at Q, the output is 4.4. So let's enter that into our table. So the voltage at point A in the light is 0 0.6 volts. And the voltage at the output point Q with no bulb is 4.4 volts. Next, let's cover up the LDR and watch those voltages and see if they change. So here we go, they are 0 0.6, 4.4. We cover up the LDR and immediately the voltages have changed. And now the input voltage is, so I'm moving around the paper there. I'm going to just actually fold that over just a little bit. There we go. So the input voltage is 4 volts in the dark, and the output voltage is 0. Input 4, output 0. So in the dark, the input is 4 and the output is 0. OK, so now let's look at those voltages at the output with the bulb back in the circuit. So now the input in the light is 0 0.6, which is the same, and the output is 5 volts. So the voltage of the output with the bulb is now 5 volts in the light. And now let's cover up the LDR and the input has gone to 3.94 volts and the output with the bulb coming on has dropped to 2.5 7 volts. 2.7 volts. Now that's a slightly misleading value, but we'll look at that in just a second. So what conclusion can we draw from this practical? Well, firstly, the input was 0 0.6 volts. If you like, let's just call this 0 volts because it's only 0 0.6 off of 0 volts. And the voltage at the output in the light was 4.4. Let's call that 5 because, again, that's only 0.6. So in other words, when the input voltage is low, the output voltage is high. In the dark, the input voltage was 4 volts. So I'm just going to call that 5 to make the explanation easier. And the output voltage is 0 volts. So in the dark, the input voltage is high and the output voltage is low. 
In the light, the input voltage was low, the output voltage was high. In other words, the 555 is inverting the voltage. Low, high, high, low. The only slight anomaly here is when we actually connect the bulb in the circuit. Because the voltage, when it was dark, was 2.7. Now the reason for that is the way that the bulb is configured in the circuit. If we go back to our circuit diagram, if we look at this, the bulb requires a lower Q to turn it on. Because the voltage drop is from 5 volts and pin 3 here needs to go to 0 volts or low to turn the bulb on because we need 3.5 volts across here. When the voltage at pin 3 is high, the bulb is off. So for the voltage at pin 3 to be high, the input voltage needs to be low. Because this 555 is inverting the voltage. So therefore, when this is a low, this is a high, and the bulb is off. When this is a high, this is a low, and the bulb is on. So in fact, in this circuit, we can change the action of the bulb coming on or going off in two different ways. Number one, we could change the bulb so that it goes low. Let's have a quick look at that. So now the bulb is on in the light, and when I cover it up, it goes off in the dark. It comes on in the light, goes off in the dark. Because we change the bulb to be the other way around. Another way that we could have changed the action of the circuit is by changing the LDR and the resistor so that the LDR became a pull-up resistor. This is the end of activity two. Welcome to activity three, where we're going to examine the further properties of a 555 IC. And that means that we're going to have a look at the current capabilities of it. So we're going to be doing some current measuring exercises here. So it's quite important that we connect up our ammeters in the right place. So we're going to need two ammeters in this circuit. One is going to measure the current flowing into the 555 and one is going to measure the current flowing out of the 555 that is drawn by the bulb. So this is exactly the same circuit as before and we need to break the wire from the junction of the resistor and the LDR that goes to pins 2 and 6 and replace it with the ammeter and we need to disconnect the bulb from pin 3 and then join it up again via the ammeter so the current is flowing through the ammeter and through the ammeter. So first of all as always let's just check our circuit still works. So I'm going to turn cover up the LDR and on comes my bulb. Perfect. So, first of all, that is the wire link there that connects pins 2 and 6 to the junction. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to plug in my ammeter. It doesn't matter too much if you get it the wrong way around. It will just show a negative reading, but it will still be the same reading. And then, here is my bulb connected to pin 3. So I'm going to take it out of the circuit, break it, just plug it in somewhere else, and then I'm going to rejoin it to pin 3 using my other ammeter. There we go. So I'm going to turn the ammeters on to milliamps because I know that the results are going to be within the milliamp range. 
and then I'm going to turn on my power supply the bulb should be off which it is and then when I cover up the LDR it should come on and it does perfect now you will notice that the bulb is not quite as bright I'll explain that just a little bit later okay so we know that the ammeters are working and they're in the circuit the right place because otherwise the circuit wouldn't work so what does this ask us to do we want to take a measurement on the first ammeter so this is my one on the left in the light and in the dark and then the measurement on the other ammeter in the light and in the dark and say whether the bulb is on or off so in the light at the moment we have no current it shows point shows point zero 0.01 or point 0.1 of a milliamp which is only point zero 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 0.001 of an amp very very small so that's point 0.1 of a milliamp and it's actually fluctuating to zero and the output is also zero so in the light we have nothing flowing into pins two and six and we have nothing flowing out of pin three and the bulb is off then in the dark the bulb comes on and the current flowing into pins two and six is still zero and the current flowing out of pin 3 is 183.32 milliamps and the bulb is on so the current here again is zero in the dark but here it is 183.3 milliamps and the bulb is on so why why is that well First of all, what this is telling us is that the 555, which is drawing current from our resistor LDR circuit, because this is providing the voltage to turn it on, is not drawing any current. The 555 input does not draw any current. It is a voltage controlled device. That's probably one of its most important aspects. It is a voltage controlled device. It does not need current. The output, when the bulb was off, of course, didn't need to supply any current, so no current was being measured. But when the bulb turned on, which was, of course, when the voltage would have dropped, it drew, the bulb drew 183.3 milliamps. Now, I did say the bulb was just slightly dimmer. Why was that? The reason for this is because the bulb actually needs 250 milliamps. So even the 555, which generally is regarded as only able to supply 200, sorry, 200 milliamps, was not enough to really turn the bulb fully on. But it was certainly enough for it to come on. And it was certainly more than it was before when we didn't have the 555 in the previous activity. So just to confirm how this circuit works when the LDR is in the light the voltage is low the 555 is not drawing any current if the voltage is low the output voltage is high and because the bulb is connected to 5 volts if this is high and this is high there is no voltage drop and the bulb is off and no current is being drawn when we cover up the LDR, its resistance increases, which means that the voltage here gets high, which means the voltage here goes low, which means there is a voltage drop across the bulb. The bulb is turned on and therefore current is drawn from pin three. Now, this is a little bit more advanced than GCSE, but just to say 
that the 555 here is sourcing current, uh, sorry, is sinking current. In other words, the current is coming from here. It is flowing through the bulb, through pin three, down to ground that way. So the current is really coming through here, but this can only sink about 200 milliamps, as well as source about 200 milliamps. The power for the chip, of course, is coming from pin eight and pin one. 